recruiting update. So some news has come out from the visit uh, of the Georgia game. A couple of big names have – there's actually been – not breaking news, but some big news, and we're going to talk about that. So Javion Hilson came into the Georgia game. He's been decommitted from Florida State for about two and a half, three months now. Number two edge in the 2025 class. He's six foot three, 235 pounds. He's a four star. I think there's a chance he becomes a five star. If Texas can land JV on Hilson, we are talking about the best defensive line class in the country. Smith Arogbo, which I consider an edge. Uh, Lance Jackson, JV on Hilson, Josiah Sharma, Myron Charles. That is a fantastic group for a defensive line. This guy. I don't think he's as good as Colin Simmons, but he's in the Colin Simmons mold. He will play his freshman year. I think Colin Simmons this year will probably end up with about six sacks. He's come off after playing real competition. He's still a good player. But J.B. on Hilson, I think, will probably get three to four next year. That's the type of player he is, and it'd be phenomenal to get him. And then think about that. His sophomore season, we're going to have Colin Simmons and J.B. on Hilson coming off the edge if you can land him. Right now, guys... He's going to visit Syracuse in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be interesting how that goes. It's a very – there's actually two vi, uh, random teams on here to look out for. He is visiting Syracuse. I don't think they play much of a role here, but it's UCF, Florida State, and Florida. Uh, still Florida State in the picture, which is surprising. That was his team he committed to. It's very rare for a guy to commit to a team, decommit, and then recommit. That's very rare. does not happen very often. So I don't think he ends up going there. Right now, I think Texas is – I mean – no hate on any of these teams, but Texas is in a much better position than Syracuse, UCF, Florida State, and Florida. If he wants to stay home, he'll choose one of the three home schools. I really see no scenario where he chooses Syracuse unless Syracuse just absolutely drops a gigantic bag on him or he has a really good relationship with their defensive line coach who used to be at AM. That's the only way I see that. So if he wants to stay home, I see him going to one of the three in-state schools I mentioned. If he doesn't, I think he ends up at Texas. I think Texas is in the lead here. If I had to percent, put a percent chance on it, I'm going 75%. I think that that's the highest off of any recruit I've gone. And the highest before that was the Corian Morris. So that didn't turn out well. So it may not turn out well. We'll see. But right now, I would pick Texas for a Javion Hilson. Justice Terry really enjoyed the visit. My concern going in with him, by the way, five-star defensive lineman, number two defensive lineman in this class from Georgia. We got on this train late. We've been on him for about month and a half and it was him that put out the feelers like hey if you show interest i have a little bit of interest in you uh so we'll see how that goes he really enjoyed his visit his um team family enjoyed the visit i think there's smoke there but again guys he's from georgia he's from georgia it's going to be really hard to pull a guy out from georgia when you just saw what they did to texas when you know how good they've been at developing your position He's a freak, guys. He's 6'5", 275. This is a guy that will play right away. I'm not saying he'll play a lot of snaps, but he will play right away. I I still think Georgia's leading here. It comes down to Auburn, Georgia, and Texas. I think it's pretty simple. If he's willing to go out of state, I think Texas and Auburn will be comparable money-wise. If he's not, he's going to end up at Georgia. And I think the scholarship limit here actually helps Georgia because they already have a really good defensive line class. They can go after this guy with full force and say, hey, listen – even if you have to sit here, you'll get your time. You'll make some good money. So we'll see. I think he ends up at Georgia. I would say Texas has a 20% shot here. It's not a lot, honestly, but we'll see. Uh, this guy, I do believe Texas has a shot with. Joseph Mbachu, he has visited Texas multiple times. I believe last week was his first official visit. Or, yeah, versus Georgia was his first official visit. Four-star, 6'5", 275. He is also from the Peach State of Georgia. But he seems to like Texas. He, Like I said, he's been on campus multiple times. I think he's enjoyed every visit he has had. So it's going to be very interesting. Family loves Texas. They love what it has to offer. Again, guys, we're not just talking about a football school here. Texas is a phenomenal institution. And people, obviously, if you care about schooling, it's one of the best in the country. I think it's one of the 10 best public schools when it comes to education. So I think it really helps out with that. I think he, obviously, looking at some of the teams, USC is a really good school. Michigan's a really good school. Auburn and USC are the biggest threats right now. I think Texas leads here, but it's barely, I'm going to say like 55% compared to the field here. It's not much. 
if USC really makes a push here and Michigan really makes a push and Michigan is starting to make pushes, we see there with Shamari Earls over there. We see that with Bryce Underwood. There's a real chance he ends up at Michigan because if you value, value education and football, I think Michigan and Texas are right there and USC are literally at the top of that. I don't think there's any other public institutions that you can say are at the top of that. Uh, next up, we have Kevin Wynn, six foot two, three hundred twenty pounds, four star, again from Georgia. Texas is really trying to dive deep into the Peach State for obvious reasons. It's phenomenal when it comes to high school recruiting. Kevin Wynn is another example of that. Whole they want the whole family to visit. The whole family has not visited. I think one of his parents did come when he came to Austin over the summer for the official visit. Remember, he wants to be a chef. That's one of his priorities. Texas took him to multiple steakhouses, multiple restaurants. He loved that. But we don't have a culinary school, I believe, so that really does hurt Texas. But, I mean, it comes down to, again, USC making their name be known here. Georgia, Georgia and Florida State. I think I just don't understand how you go to Florida State at this point. I really don't. But if they're giving enough money, I guess you do. I think he wants to be away from home. I don't see why you would have chosen Florida State and then you go back to Georgia. So I think he honestly ends up at Florida State, USC, or Texas. I'm going to say 25, 30%. I don't think it's much right now until his, if his family never shows up on campus, this guy's not coming. Uh, pretty family oriented. So we'll see here, but 25, 30% chance. There was a guy in the class, Smith or Rogbo, didn't have his family come and he did commit to Texas, but it was Texas Tech versus Texas. I think Texas wins that battle most of the time, anyways. Now, Chase Sims, and this is a very interesting one, committed to Texas A&M. Dad did go to Texas, and he wanted to go to Texas. Texas did not pursue him. They chose other avenues, other options over him. Does Can he get over that? Can he get over the sting of being passed over the first time and come back the second time? We will see. I don't know. Right now, the relationships that Texas A&M has made has made an impact on some in his camp. He does not want to leave at this moment. Could that change? We will see. They have relationships and they're winning. It's going to be hard to beat that pitch. And they recruited you and wanted you more, honestly. So this will tell me everything I need to know. If he chooses Texas, that's just a slap in the face text name. Basically saying, I never really wanted you. You were the bridesmaid, never the bride. So that'll be interesting. He's six foot three, 305 pounds. I think he's got a very high upside. Uh, he was able to talk with Kenny Baker and Pete Kwiatkowski. He has not spoken to Steve Sarkeesian. So that tells me, honestly, he's not being prioritized because I highly doubt Justice Terry did not speak to Steve Sarkeesian when he was on the visit to Texas. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, next up, Matt Framo. Haven't talked about him in a minute. Simple as this. Linebacker out of California. USC, Notre Dame still in the mix. Michigan, I think, is slightly in the mix as well. If he doesn't come on a visit during this season trying to target the Kentucky game, which would make that, what, three weeks from now, he will not go to Texas. It's that simple. If he shows up the, for the Kentucky game, I actually think he does end up in Texas. I think there's a high chance of that. Um, so if you told me he showed up to the Kentucky game, I think 70% he ends up in Texas. He show, doesn't show up at the Kentucky game, 0% chance. And this guy, to me, this is a glue guy in the class. I think this is someone we have the length and speed, but we don't really have a thumper at the linebacker position. This is that thumper. We'll see if we can get him. Michael Terry decision in November, most likely. A lot of these guys do it, or a couple of these guys also have decisions dates of December 4th. I think Michael Terry is going to end up in Texas. I think we've made the best pitch to him. I think he wants to be close to a high uh, his home because he's from Texas. He's the number one athlete in the country. We're going to use him as an H back, a tailback, a tight end, a wide receiver. He use him as an offensive weapon, makes a bigger portfolio portfolio for the NFL. So I do think he ends up at Texas, but it will be close guys. Nebraska, not going to play around with this guy. I think there's a chance he goes there, but I'm going to say 65, 70, I'll say 70%. He ends up at Texas, 30% chance Nebraska. Uh, Next up, Dorian Brew, six foot, 200 pounds. And I never thought this guy was in the picture for Texas. When everyone else was visiting on the weekend and giving Texas a shot, he showed up for a midweek visit in the middle of the afternoon. Didn't seem like he cared that much. Didn't post about it. But Texas seems to have gotten into his ear and basically pitching the proximity to home. If he wants to be close to home, he chooses Texas. If he wants, honestly, what he likes more at this point, then he goes to Oregon. It's that simple. I think it'd be really nice to get this guy as the number five cornerback in the 2025 class. We only have Caleb Chester at the cornerback position, so it is a need. It isn't a big need because we have a lot of depth there and young depth, but it'd be really nice to stack him on top of what we have. It'd be nice to stack him on Colby, Kobe Black, 
Malik Muhammad, and those guys in the back end, Warren Roberson. So we'll see what happens there. I I just don't think he wants to go to Texas, honestly. I think he likes Oregon better. I think if Oregon and Texas were literally in the same proximity, this wouldn't even be a discussion. It's literally just the close to home for me. So we'll see what happens, but I don't expect to get him. I'm going to give Oregon about a 70% chance to hold on to him, maybe even 80